Introducing 51-year-old Michael Williams, a captain in the United States Army who has just come home after his military career. As soon as he stepped foot in the familiar house, he was met with a pleasant surprise in the kitchen. For some reason, he couldn't understand why his daughter seemed to have slept on the floor. He looked into the strange incident and found out that the girl's stepmother, his wife, had forced her into it. Michael, upon hearing the news, vowed to deal with the situation as a captain would. There was a great deal of expectation as Captain Michael Williams eventually made it home. Maintaining family ties when he was away from the nation for more than eight months was no easy feat. Before the United States withdrew its forces from the region permanently, he served through four deployments to Afghanistan. By frequently recounting how his Afghan buddies had grown like a second family to him, Michael had garnered praise and the admiration of his fellow servicemen. But he missed his real family terribly when he neared 50. His dedication to his responsibilities never wavered, but he felt immense pain at being apart from his loved ones, his wife Annie, daughter Amelia, stepchildren Melissa and Charles. Michael had trouble keeping in touch during his most recent deployment in Afghanistan owing to unstable phone and internet connections, he married Annie while their daughter Amy was just three years old. Michael had told his loved ones in a single short video chat that he would be absent from Afghanistan until the real soldiers pulled out. Fortunately, fate was on his side, and he was freed two months early, so he could go home sooner than planned. Because he was so excited to see his family again, the trip back to his Florida home felt like a dream. Michael, intent on catching them off guard, completely forgot about his bags when he got home. Michael stood at the front door in the wee hours of the morning, a wide grin stretching from ear to ear, tears streaming down his face. Overwhelmed with emotion, he yelled out to his family and friends, it's me, your husband and father, back at last. But he couldn't understand why there were no noises coming from within the house. Curious about their whereabouts, he opted to remain indoors till they came back. If they came home to find him sitting on the couch with a beer in hand, watching TV, they would be shocked. He anxiously unlocked the front door and spoke out again, his voice resonating in the quiet. But the space was still unfilled. A brief time later, he could make out a faint sound of reaction. Dad, I'm here his daughter Amaya whispered. Amaya was known for her lively personality, speaking so softly was not her usual style. Concerned and making mental notes of his remarks as he walked down the corridor, he eventually yelled out again, Amir, where are you? After searching every room, he discovered that they were all vacant. He was on his way to the kitchen when he encountered a closed door. With all his might, he forced the door open, his mind set on discovering the truth about the voice. The warm kitchen was filled with emotion as Amaya hurried over to her father and embraced him tightly, her face betraying her emotions. The combination of relief and tremendous emotion was evident in her sobs. She uttered the words, I missed you so much, while sobbing. Despite his complete lack of awareness, Donald had served on numerous overseas deployments, some of which lasted for extended periods of time. Nonetheless, not even when she was younger had he ever returned to see his daughter in such a defenseless condition. While cradling Amaya in his arms, he observed a mattress on the kitchen floor that did not belong there. Amelia, aren't you sleeping here, he said, clearly worried and perplexed. Amaya, who was having trouble gathering her thoughts, tried to respond, but her words became stuck in her throat, causing her to scream and cry even harder. Michael cradled her in his arms, telling her to calm down. He reassured his worried daughter, it's all right. Take your time, out of the goodness of his heart. Michael had to resort to the commanding voice he had honed in the military since his once enthusiastic expectation of a warm welcome had suddenly transformed into bewilderment and anxiety. He gently asked Amaya to gather herself and explain everything clearly. I need you to explain why you were locked in here and why there's a mattress in the kitchen, said he. The next time Amaya sobbed, she mustered up the courage to speak clearly. She drew a deep breath and started to express her distress. Don't you see, Dad? You always disappear, and I'm left here, all by myself, she said with a mix of pain and despair in her voice. Michael wrapped his arms around her again, assuring her that his deployment had come to an end and that he would not go again, even though he was still having trouble seeing the big picture. He subtly, encouraged Amaya to tell her narrative when the tension subsided. 
Amaya started describing what had happened six months ago. Melissa, her stepsister, began to gripe about having to share a room with her at about the same time. After marrying Michael, Annie and their two children moved in with him, leaving Charles to occupy his own bedroom. At first, Melissa was overjoyed at the prospect of room sharing with her younger sister, Amaya, so she could keep an eye on her and be a close friend to her as she grew up. The stepsisters got along swimmingly as children, despite occasional disagreements over harmless things. When they were in their adolescent years, though, Melissa's demand for solitude became an issue in their shared bedroom. The moment Melissa realized she could hide in the bathroom and avoid Amaya was a turning point. Still, all she wanted was for Amaya to go. As time went on, Melissa's animosity for Amaya grew stronger. Their bedroom fights weren't as heated during Michael's first two overseas deployments since his daughter and stepdaughter were younger. But things became worse when he was gone for the third time. Melissa and her boyfriend opted to stay in their room on a day when no one else was home. The couple was embarrassed and caught off guard when Amaya showed up unannounced. Finding her stepsister with her lover was an unexpected turn of events that left Amaya feeling embarrassed and taken aback. Oh, my bad, Melissa, Amaya murmured, her face turning red. I had no idea anyone was here, you completely ignored that. This set off Melissa's emotional outburst. In the heat of passion, she stormed up to Amaya, scolded her for failing to knock and said that she had ruined the moment. Because of her reaction, Amaya ended up in her current predicament. Amaya informed Melissa that the room was actually hers and that she hadn't anticipated anyone being at the residence. As Melissa's wrath grew, she said, living with you is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I wish you were gone from here. Amaya, who was shedding tears, hurried downstairs and sought solace on the sofa, burying her face in the cushions. The sting of Melissa's cruel remarks was far worse than that of their earlier arguments. They had never been so cruel to each other in all their disagreements and arguments. When Annie got home a few moments later, she found Amaya in a sobbing heap. Melissa wanted Amaya out of her life, but Amaya didn't bring up the incident involving her and her boyfriend, all she said was that they fought. Amaya had hoped that Annie, her stepmother, would step in, but Annie's reaction was far less than planned. After saying, sometimes I wish she would disappear too, just like your father, Annie left the room without providing any further explanation. Over the following days, Amaya felt a range of emotions, from uncertainty to relief, as she tried to make sense of her displacement and the passing of time. When Michael returned home, though, the closeness between the stepsisters changed drastically. While he was around, Melissa acted civilly, but when he was gone, she became distant and frequently ignored Amaya. Because Amaya thought her father's duties as a captain in the army were sufficient, she had never told him about this. He often reminded her that he had both his military family and his family of the heart under his command. Amaya had the impression that her father didn't need to be involved in order to fix Melissa's difficulties. Time would prove, though, that she was incorrect. With a mix of disgust and remorse, Michael listened as Amaya kept recounting her trauma. He had always regarded Melissa and Charles, who he had become stepchildren with after marrying Annie, as though they were his own children. He was profoundly unsettled to hear of the stepsisters' growing animosity. He was cognizant of the fact that they might have differences of opinion. It had never occurred to him that things might go that bad. His perplexion grew as he pondered why, in his absence, his wife hadn't done anything to resolve the matter. For failing to see the gravity of the situation at home, he felt terrible. Michael brought his focus back to the here and now and eventually asked where Annie and the others were. They were supposed to meet up with Charles at the beach to celebrate Melissa's birthday, which Amaya told him they had left for four days earlier. But even Melissa's father and Annie's ex-husband kept this a family secret. That meant Amaya was stuck in the kitchen and abandoned. Amaya finished her story with tears welling up in her eyes as she described how Annie had locked her up, demanding snacks and whatever was in the fridge. She said she was doing it to stop me from destroying Melissa's stuff or attempting to take back my room. I yelled out, but nobody came. Then the phone rang in the living room, but I couldn't go get it to answer, Amaya said. The depth of his daughter's narrative broke. Michael's heart. 
both the stepdaughter's brutality and his wife's inaction shocked him. It was clear from Amelia's statements that she had suffered from anxiety and loneliness, and Michael's determination to do something about it intensified. No longer could he stand by while this happened, he was hellbent on finding a way to mend fences with his loved ones. When Annie, Melissa, and Charles got home two days later, they found it in a state of complete disarray. The couple's personal mattress was one of three spread out across the front yard, making it impossible to reach the garage. The entryway was a jumble of clothes and other possessions that belonged to Annie and her kids. Charles and Melissa appeared astounded by the terrifying sight. Annie was very certain that her stepdaughter Amaya was responsible for this seeming act of rebellion, and her fury was contagious. Annie let out a raging tantrum, accusing Amaya of being responsible and threatening serious repercussions. But when she went inside, she saw Michael Williams, Amelia's husband, sitting serenely on the couch, drink in hand, TV on. He welcomed Annie with an air of controlled seriousness, making it clear that he was aware of what had happened while he was gone. His disappointment in her, Melissa, and Charles, whom Amaya thought of as family, was emphasized when he confronted her about the surprise she had planned. Michael interrupted her mid-explanation by asserting his prior knowledge of the matter. Annie was taken aback and unable to respond after hearing Michael's confession. He came clean about his decision to return early from his mission in order to surprise his family, but was caught off guard by an unforeseen turn of events. Worried about his children's future without them, he expressed his displeasure with his wife and stepchildren and begged for a talk to ease the tension. Michael then told her that Amaya had gone back to her room, as he had decided. But he was clear that he was not going to kick anyone out of the house since he was a kind and fair person. He mentioned Amaya's history of dozing off in the kitchen and proposed that Charles, Annie, and Melissa spend the night in the garage. Protesting angrily, the two youngsters strongly opposed the plan. Annie falsely accused Michael of plotting to forcibly remove her family from the residence out of worry for their safety. Despite Michael's unwavering resolve, she fiercely advocated for her children. He made it clear that he would not give anyone another chance after they had abused his daughter and broken his trust. He reminded them of their treachery while insistently claiming ownership of the house. Michael gave them the boot if they weren't going to spend any time in the garage. As Melissa sobbed onto Charles's shoulder, the emotional strain rose, and Annie knew their stay was coming to a close. She defied her husband's demands and threatened legal action in an effort to get money out of him. Michael, unconcerned by Annie's tantrum, disclosed that he had previously informed the authorities and his attorney about his daughter's mistreatment and incarceration. He made it clear that Annie had broken the law and her behavior was completely unacceptable. Following that, he departed and ascended the stairs, remaining in the room alongside Caroline. From their vantage point, they were able to observe Margaret, Alyssa, and Henry as they gathered their possessions, loaded them into the car, and departed. Over the subsequent weeks, Michael's whole attention was directed towards ensuring Amaya was okay. After learning what had occurred to Amaya, Kathy, a new neighbor, became an omnipresent figure, dropping by practically daily. Her determination to shield Amaya from the emotional fallout of those traumatic experiences was unwavering. Their friendship deepened, and Amaya found solace in Kathy's company while she recovered. There were repercussions for Michael's report, according to the news. Annie made a pact with the prosecution to stay out of trouble. She had to do a lot of community service, pay a fine, and follow a social worker's supervision schedule. Divorce papers were filed by Michael, who was determined to move on after his wife's treachery, officially ending a chapter in their story. Now that he could devote himself entirely to being Amaya's father and guardian, Michael's military obligations could finally be fulfilled. He wasn't the only one, though, Michael was there as well. Kathy remained a reassuring presence, and her visits progressed from casual drop-ins to in-depth conversations, frequently followed by goodies or meals she had prepared herself. What began as a small act of generosity for Amaya quickly became a larger one for the three of them. Over time, Kathy's kindness and company went much beyond just providing food, and they became extremely close. As they worked together to support Amaya, who had been struggling to cope with the trauma, Michael and Kathy became closer. The wounds from her past started to heal, and her positive attitude came back. 
a new feeling of community formed amidst the shared experiences of eating and talking. The change was initially noticed by Amaya. Because of their unique experiences, deep conversations, and genuine happiness in each other's company, the three of them had developed an unusual but very important friendship. They discovered comfort in one another's presence, and their developing bond hinted at the possibility of a new family being formed, one based not just on common ancestry but also on empathy, understanding, and mutual assistance. Above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.